one of the amazing things is, I guess I would almost say vibrant nature of the fish, their size, their strength, the fact that they can travel, you know, 100, 200 miles without feeding, excavate a large area in gravel, put eggs in it, and rebury that area. If you get in the river with them, the, the size of the fish is astonishing. They have the ability to move swiftly, and the power that they exhibit is just, it's just a really vibrant, alive thing. They're doing it all on uh, adrenaline. They're not feeding anymore, and, and you know they may or may not know they're going to die, but regardless of whether they do know it, they will die. It's the end of life for them. Chinook salmon travel hundreds of miles from off the coast of California back inland to the freshwater rivers of their birth. After feasting on the wealth of the ocean, they return to these cool, rushing mountain waters where their parents left them as eggs. From the thousands of eggs that each female buries under the gravel, only a few survive to find their way back. Driven by the powerful urge to spawn, salmon can swim a thousand miles until stopped by barriers, which now are usually man-made. For spawning to be successful, they must first find a place with cold water, between 45 to 58 degrees Fahrenheit, that has a high oxygen content and the right size gravel. When her eggs are ripe, she begins to fan her tail against the river bottom, moving the rocks and sand. Hour after hour, she digs a pit for her eggs, and several males will often gather behind. Out of the group, she accepts one to stay by her side. When her time comes, she releases her eggs into the riverbed. Then the male immediately shoots out his sperm. And another cycle of life begins in these eggs, bouncing in the river rocks. Quickly the female begins to cover the eggs and fill the pit back up. This whole process of first digging and then filling her red can take days, leaving her battered and exhausted. After days of spirited dashing and digging, the spawning salmon become weak and then die. Their dead bodies set off an explosion of new life at the bottom of the food chain and are a final gift to their offspring. This massive infusion of nutrients into the river triggers the optimal conditions for their newly hatched fry to emerge into a world of temporary abundance. These waves of spawning salmon returning from the ocean also have a great effect on the other plants and animals in their mountain home. Only a few families of fish have the ability to go from fresh water to salt water and back. These fish are called anadromous. After millions of years, their return has transformed their birth streams by bringing back a great gift, nutrients from the ocean. It's kind of a neat thing in a way that this almost a process called anadromous fish is a mechanism by which food in the ocean, things in the ocean, nutrient in the ocean, is brought back far, far inland and put into a system and becomes part of the system inland. It's really something that most people would find very unexpected. It's one of those little neat things that just, you know, oh, yeah. 
I mean, that, that fish is almost entirely ocean stuff to the point where they still have bacteria on them that adapted for the ocean, you know? <laughs> They're not. <laughs> it's really very little fresh water. They took, you know, this much with them as fresh water nutrient and bring back that much <laughs> as ocean, and that's, it's kind of a neat thing. The thing is, is the chain, the web gets really complicated. Because <laughs> what happens is, is once the adults have died then, they get yanked out of the river a lot of times and know the river otters and the raccoons and probably the foxes feed off of flesh from at least the best of the carcasses that come up on the sides. So they're pulling it out that way. The mergansers are converting it into birds. You have vultures that move in and pick at carcasses that are laying around. In fact, they tend to cluster at a few of the spots that have lots of carcasses. So they're pulling out the food at this point, starting to bring it out onto the land, essentially. You know, So once again, all those nutrients that came out of the ocean originally are starting to move out onto the land. It's not to say that Chinook are the, the basis for everything that goes on out here, but they function in a role of bringing material from someplace else. You know, basically like a, uh, you know, truck supplying a grocery store, they bring in a, a large supply of material that then gets utilized throughout the whole system. And, you know, the system does produce its own material, but that material that Chinook bring is just a very useful material, particularly in the water, but even outside the water in terms of life systems. You know, it's, it's great food. The eggs laid in the gravel will start to hatch after about 40 days and will slowly develop into young fish called fry. These eggs and fry are from a red that had been uncovered by another salmon and we can see what's going on under the rocks. Separated from their mother, they get oxygen from the cool water rushing through the riverbed and live off the nutrients in their orange yolk sac. Eggs fertilized with sperm and sparked with new life develop little black dots which become eyes. Then a ridge on the surface of the yolk appears and develops into their back and tail. But the white or cloudy eggs are dead from not being fertilized. As fat and protein transform into muscles and bone, a tiny gray fish with fins takes shape. For weeks it continues to feed off the yolk sac that looks like an orange belly. Protected under the rocks, it gains the strength to swim in the swift current and escape being eaten. This fry, out from under the rocks too soon and unable to swim, will die. Before contact with Europeans, salmon was also an abundant source of food for the first people living here. About one-fourth of the people in North America lived near Salmon Rivers, where they formed the largest non-farming communities found anywhere. With the destruction of salmon spawning grounds, a dynamic ecological and economic resource of the region has been greatly harmed. Have we lost this natural wealth forever? If we can heal rather than harm our environment, their decline can be reversed, and we can learn to benefit the ecosystem in the same way as the salmon.